Hey, get energized. Look, if you're tired, you're feeling lazy, watch this episode. Today, we're going to talk about the reasons why you feel so unproductive, lazy, and tired. Let's get into it. Take our energy, you vampires. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that your example of like high energy right there? Something. Yeah, something like that. Thing. <laughs> Maybe wake them up a little bit. Yeah. Get them in here. How Shake many reasons them. we got? We got eight reasons? Eight of eight common reasons. There's a lot of reasons why you could feel this way, but I got eight of the most I common. like these. Yeah, you know, first I think we should kind of decipher uh, the difference between lack of motivation and low actual physical energy because there is a difference, although they could both feel the same. Um, motivation is is a feeling that we all love. It's great when we have it, but you're not always going to have it, even if you're if you're healthy, even if you have lots of you know physical energy. Very otherwise, fleeting. it's going to go away, and so it is important to not just rely on that wonderful feeling of motivation because if you do then your life is going to look like a lot of uh start stop right because you get motivated and you 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 got that driving factor behind you and then when it goes away you're just not because you fall so low with that feeling you don't do anything uh i think what we're talking about today and we will get to motivation as well um but mostly what we're talking about is just that lack of just overall energy where you feel sluggish tired um you just feel like something's off like what's what's going on here i don't feel like getting up and doing certain things even things that i enjoy necessarily like what's going on and and there are some very common culprits hmm. for this and often most most of the time it's one of the ones we're going to talk about uh today I, it's great we're doing this i just was sharing uh a clip our friend jordan syatt had did uh i thought it was interesting i don't think i had seen anybody on instagram do it i'm sure it's a trend or going to be a trend but did you see it, Justin? I, I did. It was like the he was, how, he was riding his bike, like an assault bike, and it was like some days he's motivated. Here's when I'm motivated in the gym, yeah. uh, to be here, and then it's like here's when I'm not motivated in the gym to yeah. be here, and it was it's the, the same, same thing. Same yeah, video. yeah. And it was like all day long. Like it was yeah. a video of him drinking his water. It was a video of him, you know, eating uh, fruit. It was him like yeah. all the things yeah. he does in the day. Really and smart. The top screen was uh, days that I'm motivated. The bottom screen was days that I I'm not motivated. It was all the same shit yeah. it was just like it's such an important thing though because uh i remember when clients would rely on motivation to to do things and it was like man if you do that you will fail eventually because yep. it, i don't care how awesome you are and how great life is currently for you there'll come a time when uh reality hits and uh you will lack motivation because it'll be a bad day mm -hmm. and you won't feel like it and things aren't going your way and at that point you can't lean on the motivation anymore to get the things you need to get done at that point you need to hopefully lean on the disciplines that you've created around exercise and nutrition to keep you going for that during that period of time right. so that when motivation hits again, you've got just even right. more momentum. It just becomes a thing you do. Right. No, 100%. I've never had to convince a motivated client to work out or to eat right or to do certain things. When you're in that state of mind, everything, you, you want to do all those things. When, you, when you're not in that state of mind, you have to still be able to find a way to do all those things. Now, lack of physical energy... Uh, I mean, that's a physiological thing. That's there's, something is going on. So we're not talking about necessarily lack of motivation, although uh, this can definitely play a role. It's really just that overall feeling that you're just, you can't function like you normally would. And so like, what is going on? And, and the first culprit or the first reason why you may be feeling uh, tired and lazy, and it's going to sound obvious, but it's, it's, it's not as obvious to people when they're experiencing this. And that's poor sleep. They yeah. just have poor the sleep. The number one factor. This hands by, down. By far, it's so crazy to me. When I started to put this together as a trainer years into my career, because early years, uh, the first five years, I paid no attention to my client's sleep. This wasn't even a factor at all. If they got results, didn't get results, uh, felt tired, whatever. I never even thought about this unless they came and complained to me about getting poor sleep and my advice, I had very limited advice. This yeah. wasn't something that I considered until later. And, and this is because I realized, and I, I had some really good mentors um, when I was a trainer. I realized through watching some of these other trainers that um, a lot of people just have suboptimal sleep. Now we know when your sleep is terrible, but what if it's just suboptimal? Like what happens? Um, well, it, it's, it's obvious when you get optimal sleep what it what suboptimal feel sleep feels like. Like when I would have clients that would come in and we would work on their sleep 
hygiene. We'd work on a sleep routine at night. We would, I'd have them go to bed and wake up at the same time. I'd have them stop eating a few hours before bed. I'd have them be off electronics. Um, I'd have them up, you know, make sure the room was blacked out and all that stuff. They'd come to me and they'd say, oh my God, I didn't realize just how much my sleep was affecting me. And now I feel so different. I feel so much happier, so much more energized, so much more sharp. This is really obvious to people who discover later in life that they have sleep apnea. This is a big one. Mm. I have a family member recently, recently she told me about this because she didn't know that she had sleep apnea. Um, it wasn't until she moved in with her boyfriend that he's like, hey, and you know, she's a normal sized girl, young or whatever. So she had no reason to think she did. And he's like, man, you, I think you need to get checked out. She did a sleep study. And they're like, yeah, you got sleep apnea. We think you would benefit from using um, a CPAP machine. And she used it and she's like, I had no idea how, that I had suboptimal sleep. It made such an impact. Like I wake up the next day feeling so different. A lot of people are are cruising at 70% when it comes to sleep. And you get them up to 90 to 100%. And it's life-changing when it comes to this. I actually would make the case that this is a majority of people. I think most, like, there's definitely a percentage of people listening right now. And they're like, yes, I know. You know, they've, they've heard us talk about yeah. it. They've been working on it. They're the ones that ask all the questions about supplementation and how to optimize it. And they're very aware of it. But I would say a, a large percentage of my clients were just unaware. Yep. They just assume that, oh, you know, I think I get a, they, they weren't even calculating how much time they're sleeping. The qual they weren't paying attention to quality. They never really paid attention to like how inconsistent the time they go to bed. They were, they, they did the, the, uh, how many times they woke up uh, the middle yeah, of the night. Yeah. How many times yeah. they get up in the middle of the night. They weren't uh, taking account for what they were doing themselves every weekend where, you know, oh, during the week they have this real consistency. And then on Friday nights and Saturday nights, they stay out till two in the morning and right. then try and restart all over again on Monday. And like, I think a lot of people, People fall in that category of oh my sleep is fine i'm guilty of this i think that um for most of my young adulthood and training career i just said oh I, i'm fine i think i'm okay I, i'm sure i'm a little sleepy and tired when i first wake up but by the time i shower and get my day going i'm fine i think a lot of people fall in that category that don't realize how much opportunity there is for them to improve their performance in the gym their results how they feel by actually just optimizing the vast majority of people would benefit from simply putting some effort and focus on on getting better sleep. Right. Seriously. Like, Even if it's just a little. Just yeah. a little. Like, There's definitely people with real sleep challenges and that have tried working on this and can't figure out what the problem is. But most people don't really put a lot of time and effort into this at all. They just, I go to bed at this time, I wake up at that time. What does your sleep routine look like? I don't know. I go to bed, you know, I turn off the TV and, and, and close my eyes. If you just put a little bit of effort into trying to get better sleep, you typically will get a nice big return. And there's nothing that will give you better energy than getting good restful sleep. That, to give you an example, right? We all know seven to eight hours of sleep is what we want. That doesn't mean seven to eight hours in bed. That means seven to eight hours of sleep. So if you go to bed and you go, let's say you go right to bed, that'll give you seven hours for when you wake up. You're not getting seven hours of sleep. It takes you some time to fall asleep. It might take you 30 minutes, 20 minutes to fall asleep if you're lucky, maybe longer. So really you're getting six hours and 40 minutes, six hours and 30 minutes. And then that that becomes cumulative. So if you want eight hours of sleep, you probably should go to bed 30 minutes uh, before that eight hours uh, counts. For example, just a silly example. And this is what I mean by you put a little bit of effort, um, you tend to see a uh, big, big payback from this. Next is uh, in regards to exercise. Exercise has a profound impact on sleep, both sleep quality um, and quantity and your ability to fall asleep, the stages of sleep throughout sleep. Um, if you are totally inactive, if you if you don't move, if, you, if your exercise or activity consists of walking to the car, um, you know, walking to your office, and that's pretty much it then uh, you are going to get less quality sleep than you could from simply adding some activity. On the flip side, too much exercise over training also causes major sleep disturbances. The point with this is the right amount of activity that's appropriate for you and your body will give you really good effects uh, when it comes to sleep. Hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled Understanding Your Mood, stress in sleep. It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally 
free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. A, a major factor when, when you're not moving a lot, like your body tends to try to adapt to whatever you're continually introducing to it. And uh, if I'm sedentary and I'm sitting in my chair a lot for work and in my car and commuting, and then I'm at home, I'm watching TV, I'm kind of laying down. I'm just continually telling myself that I'm in this seated position, this laying down position. Like I don't need to expend that much energy. So it's really hard uh, to, to summon energy when I actually need it. Uh, if if I'm continually kind of presenting that sort of environment for my body. So to introduce exercise and activity uh, to, to break it up and to make sure that uh, that's a priority that I now, I'm not trying to prune that out uh, in, in terms of something throughout my day. Um, this is going to help to spike that up and bring that energy back. I mean, you guys have heard me talk about this on the podcast. One of the things as I've gotten older, the one of the motivations to train at all, even if it is to just go do one exercise, is I know a significant difference in how helpful I am as a husband back at the house. Mm -hmm. If there's a day, especially the, what we do here, where we, I sit in a car, I drive here, we sit in a chair, we podcast with, in, this, in this cave with these lights on us and artificial lights on us, and then could go home. And then if I were to sit at home and watch TV or something like that, boy, it is, it's very hard for me to then motivate myself to get up and do yard work or help around the house or cook or do dishes or anything like that, yet simply making sure that I create some sort of activity uh, lifting-wise, whether that be just five sets of squats or doing a, a movement, Turkish get-up, like what an impact that makes on my energy and motivation through everything else. And the flip is also true because I went through this phase of my life of like, crushing the gym yeah where i'm training it. training so hard that then i'm so exhausted this was also I, this was actually my phase of when i started doing like crossfit type workouts where i realized mm -hmm. like this is not for me because i realized i was so spent i was so unproductive at work and yeah. everything other part of my life because of how much i was expending well and and that's the thing it's like you get all motivated to take it all on at once when uh, we actually apply the protocol like our MAPS 15 where it's like we got one to two exercises that, you know, I'm just going to introduce the, the lowest amount of uh, exercise possible initially. And then this is like that momentum builder that uh, if I can frequently do that, I can build upon that. Uh, you you definitely feel the difference with energy as you as you take that approach versus like taking it all on and hammering yourself and then oh my god now I'm in a different situation. Yeah, I mean I was I was speaking uh, in terms of exercise too little or too much in regards to sleep and its effect on sleep. I mean you guys are making uh, the other great points, which is just general um, energy production. Your right. body adapts to exercise because exercise is a stress. And so we we're familiar with the other, with the more common adaptations, building muscle, burning body fat, right. Improving, um, you know, endurance and stamina and stuff like that and strength. Right. But one of the other adaptations is energy production. If your body, your body will only ever produce as much energy as it thinks it needs. Why would it produce more than that? Right. That'd be a wasteful, inefficient machine. Um, so if you start to put more demands on your body, this is the, uh, the amazing physics of uh, energy expenditure. Um, up to a certain point, of course, because you can overdo it, but up to a certain point, the more energy you expend, the more energy your body creates. This is why, how workouts energize your body. So, so there's a couple reasons for this. One is your body learns to produce more energy because it thinks you need more energy because of what you're doing. And two, when you're sitting all day long and you're not moving all day long, you are sending an outside to in signal that tells your body, well, we're not doing much. Yep. We might need, we might be sick. We might be depressed. Mm -hmm. We might be whatever. And your body starts to ramp things down as a result. Activity is one of the best ways to produce more energy. By the way, if you're listening to this right now and you're feeling kind of like, Ugh, lethargic and out of it, Go test this out. Pause <laughs> what I'm saying right now. Yeah. Just do literally Five minutes of some kind of activity, uh, air, you know, body weight squats, couple push-ups. Don't go crazy. Go for a little walk. Come back. Turn on the podcast again. And how do you feel? Do you feel more tired? No, you probably feel more energized. Of course, on the flip side, you can overwhelm your body's ability to adapt with too much stress. In which case, then you're going to feel completely crushed and fatigued. This one, I think, is more obvious for a lot of people. You know what it feels like when you just beat yourself up. You just you're you're fried. You're totally fried. 
but not enough exercise is interesting. It's like the more you don't move, the more your body adapts to get you to not move. Forms into that. It starts to form into this low energy kind of producing machine. This is why uh, one of the best ways, you know, I'm, during the pandemic, I, I advise this a lot to people. People were locked up at home and didn't know what to do. And I told them to break up their day uh, with little mini workouts, do a 10 minute workout three times a day. And what that did is it, it energized them and produced these kind of good feelings, uh, throughout the day. It produces activity, produces catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine, adrenaline. You get some dopamine that comes out, especially if there's some challenge, right? You get that nice dopamine release, which makes you want to do more. Um, you get endorphin release, uh, especially if the workout's a little harder, all those are feel good kind of motivating uh, type chemicals and they come from activity, not from inactivity. Now on the flip side, if you're just doing a lot, you're working out like crazy or you just, you're in a sport and they're training like crazy, you're in the in season, then uh, rest is probably going to give you more energy. Doing more isn't going to energize you anymore, may, may take away from, uh, you know, your energy uh, stores. So the, so in essence, the right amount of activity will give you more energy. And if you're sedentary, moving for sure will make you feel more energized. Next up is not enough sunlight. This is a modern problem, by the way. Uh, by the way, this is well documented. If you look at things like depression, um, you can actually correlate it uh, to how much sunshine a particular place gets. Uh, they'll show this in the US, for example. States with less sunshine tend to oh, suffer yeah. from more depression than states with more sunshine. The sun, uh, it feels good on our bodies. It there's uh, there are effects on the brain. Our cells respond to it. Our cells respond to it. Uh, if you work in an office and you're indoors all day long, you are going to have worse energy. You're going to have less energy. You are going to feel more lethargic than had you not had you gotten sunlight. It's also directly connected to the very first one. Yes, like huge difference on the quality and, and how easily I can fall asleep when I get sunlight early on. And what great example is too anyone who has kids has has seen this happen yeah. before. If I, it's a night and day difference when Max has been cooped up in a house or we didn't get that early sunlight and get him outside and play in the sun for even just a short period of time, but getting him out there early to play in the sun. His ability to go down for a nap or go down for bed now is it's night and day difference versus being cooped up all day. I'm I'm no different. I can tell when I've had a day where I'm in front of a computer screen or in a cave all day long, and then I try and go to bed that night, my body is is all off. And so not only does it impact your your energy level directly from the sun and that in that current day, but then it also sets you up for probably poor sleep too if That's you don't right. get that. So they're both very connected. Connected. Yes, uh, compounding effects. Uh, next up is hydration and electrolyte imbalance. This one, uh, this is one again that I figured out later on as a trainer. Um, again, I had great uh, trainers that I worked with, and I remember hearing this young lady talk a lot about hydration with her clients, and she would have them track, and then she'd say, "Okay, I want you to, you know, double the amount of water that you take in." And then the clients would come in, and then I'd hear them say, "They'd all say the same thing: Oh my God, I have way more energy." Yeah. <laughs> because they're drinking more water. Most people um, don't drink the optimal amount of water. Now, they're not dehydrated in the sense that they're drinking too little water to where their body's not functioning well and it can cause illness. But there is, so there's a minimum and there's also an optimal. And the optimal amount is more than the minimum. And most people drink somewhere around the minimum. They drink just when they're thirsty and that thirst signal kind of comes on a little late and then they drink just enough and then they're done and then they get busy and they don't think about it. Yeah. Um, drinking a good amount of water and also making sure that you have enough electrolytes, especially if you look, if you're a di if you eat a diet that is uh, very low in processed foods is, is mainly whole natural foods and you work out or you eat a very low carbohydrate diet you probably need to add electrolytes to your water. Um, and you'll know this because you'll add them and then you'll feel way better within 15 to 20 minutes. So hydration electrolytes, big one. This is actually one of the earliest memories I have of Justin. So early on in my training career, I actually did not realize how connected this was to clients' energy levels. I instantly went to calories, carbohydrates, sleep, kind of the boxes that we're already checking. 
And I think I overheard Justin talking to his client and I remember asking him about it back then. And just, he's like, oh yeah, you wouldn't, you'd be surprised how many people just don't drink enough water and simply getting them hydrated. Like they instantly notice a energy surge. And I was like, really? And then I remember after that, like advising and I realized how many clients were like, oh my God, that's all I needed yeah. was to, a yeah. little bit of hydration. It's like, wow, you're right. So many people can, and I don't know if that's because uh, of the, the era of, energy drinks and other types of fluids that people drink or they just get so busy. I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure what the connection of why that's so common with clients. That's why I was unaware of it, but it became like a go-to, like make sure we cross uh, check that box is like, are you, and that's also what started me having clients actually carry the gallons mm -hmm. around because that, that way we were measuring because most people that weren't tracking were grossly under consuming yeah. i think yeah we just somewhere along the lines just weren't intentional with it anymore uh and if you're not intentional with it you're not planning your day out by having that accessible uh we could just easily get into our work and we can get into our routine without you know properly hydrating and then you have brain fog you got the fatigue yep. you're lethargic like that just stuff uh, that all just happens you know as a result of that so uh, you know, having that intention going into your day and then and setting yourself up for that makes a big difference. Have you guys ever, so I, I also have member have done this. I've ever done this for a period of time where, and I'm actually not great at this. I still, it, it's reminding this conversation, reminding me. Uh, of like first thing when you wake up, like just like pounding like yeah. a whole glass of water. Mm -hmm. Like I like when you do that, I can feel a difference. I can oh, yeah. feel, I feel, feel a, a difference. difference. Right? Oh yeah, I mean, even the salt, like he's talking about too. Like yep. it, you know, I didn't even consider that a factor until uh, realizing I am eating whole foods. I am eating a lot of just meat and you know vegetables and um, to not. Even you, you add the salt and, and you think it's a lot because it's salty and it's like, but it's not even close to the uh, prepackaged yeah, Especially stuff. if you work out, yeah. especially if you work out, you need more of it. I, I mean, I remember I'd get clients that I would train and I would see them at like noon, right? And they'd walk in and I'd ask them, how much water have you had today? And they'd go, oh, I haven't had any yet. Mm -hmm. Noon, right? And they went to work and everything. They were at work yeah. at 9 a.m. They woke up early and they had no water all day long. And that was common. Yeah. So then I would tell them, okay, when you wake up, make sure you have a full glass of water. And then a couple hours later, another full glass of water. Most people would do well with about a half a gallon to a gallon of water a day. Um, and that sounds like a lot for a lot of people. Um, but it's a nice range, half a gallon to a gallon. Most people will find themselves feeling great uh, drinking about that much. And then again, don't forget uh, the electrolytes. Next up, um, this one is, this one is somewhat common, but if you fix this one is a life changer and that's a nutrient deficiency. If you have a nutrient deficiency, like you're, you're not getting enough of some of the B vitamins, like vitamin B12, for example, mm -hmm. or D, uh, or magnesium, or your iron levels are low. Um, the kind of fatigue that you would feel is typically crushing. You would almost be like, okay, what is wrong with me? I don't understand why I feel so lethargic and out of it and tired. And then you could go get tested, go get tested, see if you have a nutrient deficiency. And then if you do and you fix this game, absolute game changer. I remember when this happened uh, to my wife, I remember her B vitamins were low. We didn't know this. And she was just having this tremendous fatigue, couldn't figure it out. And when we figured out that it was B vitamin deficiency, a good B vitamin supplement, uh, she, I remember her feeling hyper. She felt hyper a couple hours after taking a B vitamin. Now, if you don't have a B deficiency, you'll notice nothing. You'll take your B right. <laughs> vitamin, you feel nothing. For her, she was like, oh my God, I feel weird. I feel hyper. I'm like, uh oh, you definitely had a deficiency. So this one you can get tested and you can see iron deficiencies, uh, obviously far more common in women than in men. Men typically don't have an issue with this. Um, or if you're vegan, this could be an issue. B vitamin deficiencies also tend to be more common in women and also uh, more common um, in vegans. And the same thing with D, vitamin D deficiencies. By the way, vitamin D deficiency can cause things like anxiety and depression and pain. And, and vitamin D deficiencies are pretty common in both men and in women. Well, you say the big four, uh, vitamin D, vitamin B, iron, and magnesium. Those would be the big mm -hmm. four. I'd say the, those are the four most common yes. uh, you know, um, nutrients that when I'm having a client or assessing their their diet, what's going on with them, that they're, those By, be by the way, what this feels like is crushing fatigue, then you go to bed and you have crappy sleep and you can't yeah. figure out why I'm not sleeping well. It's so frustrating. And yet I'm so tired. Or just like le low level of lazy, not feeling good, like yeah, yeah. not enough to where it's you're so deficient that like you're seeing sure. major signs, 
But I can't tell you how many times one of these four, if not, or multiple were not off and simply just sub. This is also why you've heard us on the show before. Always recommend this first before all the performance supplements that everybody wants to talk about. There's always the latest, greatest fat burner, the latest, greatest muscle builder. Like, you know, people always gravitate to the newest science that's out and get so excited about it. Meanwhile, haven't tested to see if they have any sort of deficiency in these big four that we're talking about. And I tell you right now, fixing one of those big four makes such a significant difference in their overall energy levels throughout the day and sleep. It's life changing. That it will absolutely result in more muscle and mat, more fat burning than the best fat burner, the best muscle builder that are out there. Oh. And so. These this, are essential nutrients. That's why you have to focus. You have to invest in finding out that first before wasting your money on one of these performance supplements that are being marketed to you. All yes, time. these are essential nutrients. Meaning, if they're if you're deficient enough in one of these nutrients, you won't thrive. You will fail to thrive, and you could cause and create some serious issues. I had a, a, another client who had all these neurological uh, issues. There was numbness and tingling. Couldn't figure out what was going on. She was freaking out. And she came back and it was a B vitamin deficiency as well. Solved. Solved by supplementing with B vitamins. All right. Next up is too much caffeine. So I want to say this. This mm. is I want I want to be clear here. Nobody is ever too tired or too lazy because they are lacking caffeine. Okay. <laughs> That's not why you're tired or lazy. Caffeine is not an essential nutrient. <laughs> so uh so I want to say that first. Blasphemy. N number two. Too much caffeine can actually cause the opposite. When you have too much caffeine, you can have uh, you you start getting these energy oh, crashes, you bonk. and yeah. you affect your sleep negatively. In this fact, how I, this is how I came up with my yep. number. This is how I know the number. Mm -hmm. I know the number of milligrams that I have to start going the other direction because literally. Anything beyond that number now results in me being fatigued from it. Yeah. Yep. Like if I start pushing it's beyond downward spiral after yes, that. three, three like caffeine drinks or cups of coffee or whatever in a day, that fourth, fifth, whatever, it doesn't matter how many, those now have a reverse effect. It's wild yep. how it mm -hmm. happens. And so yep. I know as I start to creep up getting close to that number, it's time for me to start weaning off and go the other direction because the inevitable is going to happen. I'm just going to pile another one on. It's only going to make it worse. Yeah, yeah. Or you'll feel better for 10 minutes and then you'll be like, oh, Right. Oh, and then can't. and then certainly my sleep is getting disrupted that night. Yes. Uh, now, this this one, the reason why this one's so challenging is because caffeine has become such a big part of our culture and it's great when you first use it. I mean, caffeine's an amazing drug. I mean, if I invented caffeine yeah. right now, if nobody knew what caffeine was and I created it right now, I would be instantly uh, one of the richest men in the world. And then I'd probably, they probably nobody would have drank. Yeah, but you know yeah. what? You want to know what's funny about that? And I think you would agree with this that if you found that today, it would be illegal. Illegal. 100%. What, what we know that <laughs> deaths caused by it, yeah. how we know it affects your central nervous system, what we know about caffeine today. If that was a found it's drug, it's a highly day, addictive substance. We would one hundred percent not make it legal. That's no. crazy. That's what I think is crazy. Yes. Is that we? That's how much we've normalized it in our culture. You know, and I'm just as guilty. So it's not me pointing the finger. But if it was found today, we would make it illegal. It would. So we're not demonizing caffeine. Uh, used appropriately, probably has some health benefits. Um, but if you use it chronically, you do build up a tolerance very quickly. Then you become reliant on it, and then you need more to produce the same effect, and then you hit that breaking point where it affects your sleep and or it causes crashes. So when people come to me and they say, oh, man, I'm super lethargic, tired, and I ask them, how's your con caffeine consumption? And they tell me, it's like, uh oh, you're taking too much. We got to wean you off, and then let's work on some other stuff. Well, and also to kind of parallel to what we're talking about with momentum, it's like, you don't want to. You want to be disciplined. You don't want to rely on something like uh, caffeine or or something else that I have to have this in order to now produce this this exercise, this movement to to happen as a result. Result. It's just something I do. So if that's sort of uh, impeding upon your ability uh, to just go do the work as well, you got to assess that. Totally. Hey, real quick. Sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have a sale this month on some programs. We have a beginner program, Map Starter. It's fifty percent off. Then we have a bundle. That's different. It's called the Starter Bundle. That includes our most popular programs. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. Now, this episode is brought to you by a sponsor, Legion. Legion makes some of the most premier supplements out there. 
for fat loss, muscle building, performance enhancement. They have protein powders, pre-workouts, supplements for recovery, supplements for sleep, multivitamins. Uh, it's one of the best quality products out there or companies out there. Go check them out. Get yourself a discount. Go to buylegion.com. That's B-U-Y-L-E-G-I-O-N.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. Get 20% off your first order. And if you're a returning customer, you'll get double rewards points. All right, here comes the show. Next up is that you're just overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed with stress. <laughs> you're, and so there's this interesting thing that happens uh, to humans where when you have too many things happening all at once, you tend to do nothing. You freeze. You freeze with uh, overwhelm. I don't know what to do, so I'm doing nothing at all. So this is more of a life thing. It's like, okay, look at your life. Maybe you're super tired and fatigued because you're doing more than you can handle. Mm. Uh, and by the way, don't judge yourself on this because there's definitely people that can do more than you, just like there's people that can do less than you. Mm. But this is where people start to get into a trap where they say, well, I mean, my mom did way more yeah. than this or this my friend does way like more than this. Why, why am I so, it doesn't matter. At the, the point is it's more than you can handle. So take some stress off, uh, lighten the load, ask people to help you or reduce your responsibilities. Um, because this right here is a path to some serious uh, burnout. There's mm -hmm. a couple things that come to mind when, when we talk about this. One is the type A personality that uh, believes they thrive in this, mm -hmm. right? Like the, almost addicted to this. I'm guilty of this, right? Like I, I like so much going on sometimes that it keeps me so busy and I'm always trying to solve a problem. And there's a part of me that kind of likes that and is, is drawn to that. You got to be very careful of that yeah. because you being drawn to that can absolutely make a, an, a, a, an impact on how you're sleeping, how your energy levels are out today, and then also impacting your results. The other one is that we always, uh, or we don't think about uh, exercise and some of these things as like a total amount of stress that my body- They're can. all stresses. Yes. So a lot of times people think that, oh, my workout isn't that hard. It sh I should be totally fine. Yeah, but you're also going through a divorce. You just switched jobs. You have a, a, a two-year-old kid. And it's like all of that is all compounding stress. And then it, then your what you think is a weak workout is too much for you because your stress yeah. bucket is overfilling, right? And or the other way, like, oh, life is so good good. So then you are loading it up like crazy in the workout. You don't realize that you're so it's a total amount of total stress that the body can handle before you overspill in that bucket. And so those two things are the things that come to mind when I think about uh, overwhelming stress and how that can start to impact it. And so you have to really evaluate yourself if you're one of those two types of people. Are you the type of people that are drawn to all that excess stress because you think you operate better in that place? Or are you too somebody who is uh, doesn't uh, understand how to measure all total stress because uh, it all counts towards this? Yeah, and you know what you want to do is you want to look at your, your stressors and activities and responsibilities, and you want to prioritize them because you can't do everything, okay? So manipulate the factors that are more manipulatable, right? So if you have a, a job... Uh, that's demanding and you have young kids, well, you probably can't quit your job and you definitely probably don't want to not raise your kids. So look at all the other stuff that you got going on. Well, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I work out six days a week. Well, that's a factor that you can manipulate. Maybe I should work out three days a week and, and cut that down. What's something else? Well, I got that one group that I go to or I got that one responsibility that I signed up for. Can I cut those out? I think I need to because these other ones are more important. So really it's about looking at everything that you're doing, weighing things out. And I know this is a tough one because we want to be able to do everything. We want to be able to you know, do all the stuff that we want to do. But if it's overwhelming you, then you end up doing nothing. So pick the ones that are most important. Take time away from these things that are less important so that you have enough of you to be able to do the things that are most important. Lastly, you, you lack purpose. This mm -hmm. may be why you're tired. What may be why you're feeling lazy. Some of the most driven, motivated people I've ever met in my entire life were people that volunteered their time for something that they believed in. And I, I've seen people like this. I've, I've worked with them. I've been around with people like this. These people, you would be, you just shocked at how much energy they have to do this work that they're doing. But because they have a purpose behind mm -hmm. what they're doing, because they believe so strongly in the thing that they're doing, they find the energy to do so. This is where their joy comes from. If, you're, if your job is something you don't believe in, 
you don't have much purpose in your life or you don't feel like you have much purpose. There's no challenge. You know, some purpose comes from challenge as well. If you're kind of just cruising along, well, you might just be feeling tired and lazy because you have no purpose. Find what that is. Now, of course, the follow-up question is, well, how do I find my purpose? Oh, there's a couple places that people typically find them. Uh, one of them is in having a family. That's a common one. Another one is in their job, but you better have a job that you really believe in where it's like, I would do this even if I, if I didn't get paid or I would do this uh, for free. And another one is a spiritual practice. Do you have a spiritual practice that gives you a sense of purpose that's larger than yourself? Those are the three most common ones. Those aren't all the ways, but those are the three more common ones where, where people tend to find Well, I think out. you hit it on the head is find something that's challenging. I think that that tends to give people people that are searching for it. But we know this is such a uh, um, there's a, a direct connection here. I mean, uh, we have examples. That everybody has probably knows somebody who is retired or empty nesters. How often do you see when a married couple of you know say married for twenty years and then their kids are now out of the house? And they're like looking at each other, like, "What do we do?" Maybe or they, now. or they realize they don't even like each other anymore because this, their whole purpose was around raising these kids, not realizing that there was something that they weren't doing for each other. And then the same thing goes for the guy who worked his whole life to get to retirement, and you know that was his purpose. And then he gets there and he retires, and then he, you know, he does you know twenty rounds of golf, and then after that, he's like. What the hell do I do? I'm so I'm bored. I'm tired. I'm lazy. I, I have no purpose. And so, this is a this is a, a a big one for sure, and one that is probably of all the ones we said, the one of the most difficult to probably solve because a lot of people that lack the purpose also lack uh, the idea around what they should do. You know, you know, an easy easier way to find this is to to try to become a better person and say to yourself, all right, what would that look like? for me to become a better person? What are the things I can learn? And then seek them out and try to grow with them. I think if you're constantly growing in a way that makes you a better person, I think you can definitely find um, purpose in that. So this could be a course, a class. It could be volunteer work. I just talked to a friend of mine about this. She's uh, in her late 30s, just doesn't have kids, doesn't want to have kids. She's a you know, high position at her company, but She's kind of like, whatever about it. And she's just like, you know, I just feel like, I don't know. I just don't feel a sense of purpose. And so we started talking and I said, well, what are the things that really get you, you know, either really fired up or things that get you really motivated? And we started talking and she decided she's going to donate some of her time uh, to helping women in abused relationships uh, because she's, she was in one herself when she was younger. And she had this look in her eyes and I could tell, she's like, wow, that, I think I want to do that. I think that feels good. Gave her a sense of purpose. So that's, you know, find those things, you know, and, you know, you see this too with a lot of young men where that natural drive to create, uh, to conquer or to, to overcome challenges, they are expending it on, uh, video games, for example, which tap into that to an essence, but don't really give you what you're supposed to get. So rather than, rather than going out in the real world and conquering or going out in the real world and, and, and going in challenges, they're just trying to beat level 45 on whatever video game uh, that they're doing or level. or maybe you 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 have uh, you know maybe you have social anxiety and uh you know you you're just like you know I don't want to go out and talk well maybe there's some purpose behind that go out and put yourself in a group and meet people and put yourself out there and uh watch how that feels when you can overcome that that big challenge but there's a lot of different ways to find that purpose but if you don't have purpose it'll be very difficult all right i know you like that episode if you did check this one out <laughs> 